What's up and welcome back to episode 97 of Pro Pels Talks, the home of your ninth place in the Western Conference New Orleans Pelicans, presented to you by Boot Crew Media and Company Burger. Company Burger located at 4600 Ferret Street, the best burger in New Orleans, was just there last week. It was fantastic. And the power went out. I don't know what happened there, but the burger was actually really good. Before we get in the show, before we get Lido and Five in here, remember we have an awesome promo code with Boot Crew Media and DraftKings Sportsbook app. The NBA playoffs mean next level basketball. Get ready for all the action by betting the playing tournament with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets instantly. You already know who you're going to take. Pelicans versus Spurs. Pelicans, that's a lock. So all you have to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code BOOT. Bet $5 on any NBA team to win. You should just probably bet on the Pelicans. During their play-in tournament, and get $150 in free bets instantly. When the Pelicans win, you win. Promo code BOOT at DraftKings Sportsbook app. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER. Wow. Um, join with Lido5, Ross. Thanks for joining us, Ross, even though you're a little late. But that's fine. As long as you show up, as long as you show up, you're here. So um, I want to talk about, before we dive into the Spurs and Pelicans, uh, I want to talk about what happened last night. So I got to bring five with me. Um, we really had a really good time. Um, it all started walking up, I guess, to the game. And five really wanted a uh, a shirt, the shirt that they were giving away by the local artist. It was a, it was a really cool shirt. And uh, we walk in, get through the gate, and I just wanted to have a beer with one of my buddies and you know one of my friends and a guy that I, I look up to. And um, Ross, he he says, if I don't get a shirt, I'm gonna drop kick you in the chest. So that that's how we started off the night, and um, and it kind of snowballed. It snowballed into that. And Ross, I'm gonna let five go here first. Usually, I give you the first crack because. You know, five and I, we, we walk in, get to the floor seats. We're having a really good time. And five is being shouted out by a lot of people in different sections, man. I mean, everybody knew five. Was a celebrity, in- man. I mean, I, like everyone, like people were calling him. Rel called him out. Uh, we had a couple of people in section 113 calling five. Like five was dapping off people on, on the dance team. Like it, it was out of control. Wow. So we get into the game. Um, it, it, was a, it, it was a good first quarter. And then it kind of fell apart, which, which you figure is kind of like a G League game. And then I think it all snowballed uh, there at halftime. So see Juvie, you see, <laughs> you see, you see Juvie having a great time, and then all of a sudden we're going to play the clip, clip here. If you're watching on YouTube, the guy, the white tall guy. <laughs> five, this right, is not. Talking. This is not in the pre pre pressing. We did not talk about this pregame. So I'm you're going to do this as if yeah, I we're, knew. We're, we're going to do. Continue. We're, Go ahead. No, so, do your thing. Tall white guy. A, Ross. Ross, I can't pronounce his name. Um, but anyways, the, they're shooting, and the ball bounces over the first row and right into in the five's lap. And I'm like, fucking launch it, dude. Like, you got one shot of this thing. So all of a sudden, the, the tall white guy for the Warriors, I, I can't pronounce the name, but he asks for the ball back, and five just flips it back. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, shoot the ball. So then he keeps hounding a couple of the players. Like, give me shoot. He's like, give me the ball. Give me the ball. So then this is this is what happens. So. Five gets the ball here if you're watching on YouTube. Kind of looks up. He misses really bad. The first oh. Time. Look, the second one, though, when you release the second one, Five, I thought it almost went in. That looks pretty good there. Five, I'm going to give you the floor. You, you, you got drug on Twitter there. Um, <laughs> and then you started challenging me one-on-one. You're acting like I was making fun of you. I don't know why you, you got mad at me for videoing you. Um, but I'm going to let you kind of talk about <laughs> what happened there. As a, as I sip my orange juice and I, and I set it down. Look, all right. Let's first let's start from the from the beginning. It was a great great game. Well, great time at the game. Um, as I got there, now Justin told me to meet him at a certain time. He was not there on time. First of all, <laughs> let's, let's start there. Now I'm in line with people that I know. I can walk into the into the stadium with them. But I was like, you know, I'm here with Justin. Let me just go with him. Now, Justin has different plans when he gets there. He's like, oh, I got to have drinks with my buddy. I'm trying to see my buddy. I'm like, well, bro, I already, I've already been here. So, look, I'm really trying to get the shirt. Lito can attest to this. That's the only reason I went there that early. If that yeah. was the case, I just would have went there at the, any other time that I go to the game. But that's, again, I texted Justin before. I was like, I'll be there kind of early. Now, I, I didn't mention the shirt because I figured, you know, this, like, he, he probably doesn't care about that. 
He didn't. He didn't care at all. I care about stuff like that. Hey, that's just me. It is what it is. <laughs> Justin, Justin sent me sent me the ticket. Uh, as if he could have just done that from the beginning. He could have just sent me the ticket to start with. I could have just walked in to begin with. But that's neither here nor there. I ended up getting a beer and a water. I chug both of them just to walk into the stadium very, very quickly. And I get a shirt. I thought they were going to give out like different sizes. Hence why I really wanted to get in quick. But they were just giving out extra larges. It happens. Cool. Get into the game. I'm chilling. Great time. I've never sat on the floor in my life. I'm like, yo, this is actually pretty cool. Like, the sh- I'm going to be honest. The food, matter of fact, I even, one of the, uh, the attendees called me nephew because I, I got him a Snickers. You know, like stuff like that was happening. He was like, hey, Neff, give me your Snickers. I was like, hey, I got you, bro. You know, since that's my uncle now and that I never met, but that's the either here nor there. You know, so Justin, first of all, let's start here. We we walk on the blue carpet, first time ever. He's like, hey, man, I got to go meet a guy that's been supporting Propel's talk probably since its inception. So we walk all the way across to meet his guy. I start seeing people. People are calling me real for one. She calls me and says, hey, I see you. Then my cousin calls me because he has tickets. So that's that kind of thing happened. Not Jared's <laughs> famous. Let's just let's just remove that notion, please. So we ended up walking back around. Another cousin of mine that dates a girl that's on a dance team. I saw her. She throws me a shirt as the game has started. Cool. Sitting, sitting second row, having a wonderful time. The team's getting waxed. These players are really, really tall and gifted. It seems like, all right, this we kind of knew that was happening. We saw um, Reggie Miller, and I kept calling this dude, uh, uh, well, I forgot him. I forget, but his name is uh, Kevin Kept Harlan. Mark I, kept calling, I kept calling him Marv because they kind of look alike. I mean, not, not really, but kind of, whatever. So, cool. Uh, I'm sitting there, and the ball rolls to me on a bounce, and I grab it, and I just toss it back. Like, I mean, I don't care. Like, whatever. He ends up, you're going to show it again. Can yeah, we're going. I explain my story? You can, can talk. My, all right. Keep going. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, <laughs> I, uh, so uh, he, I give it back to him. Then he throws me another one after he misses. Because I thought he was going to make the three. He ends up missing that really badly. So, he, he throws me the rock. So, I'm trying to gain my footing. There's really not that much room, but sitting behind that seat, I shoot a bad shot. Okay, cool. Jordan Poole's nice enough. Like, hey, no, nah, I get another one. And the second one's online, but again, you don't realize how far that is when you're standing there. And I shot that all arms. That wasn't a run and jump. Oh, whatever. Let's get to the people on Twitter. Let's get to you guys. And Justin. I'm going to get to Justin as well. Justin was so quick to post his video. You know, he did it. I'm not tripping on that. But I, he had said something like, oh, yeah, at least I would have hit the rim. Justin. I said the goal. Even if you did, would have hit the rim. That that's, if that's something you would have done, you still probably would have made it. Honestly, you're probably not better than me at basketball. Let's start there. Let's start there. You 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 can talk. No, let me finish. No, no, no. You wanted to do this. You could have just talked about the game. You wanted to talk about this. It uh Will Guillory, Chris Connor. Uh, oh my god. 504. In anybody, it please, please. I can tell you 90% of Twitter can't see me on the basketball court. I'll bet money on it. You can at me, you can tweet me, you can do whatever you want, you can DM me, we can go anywhere. Let me think. Justin, especially you, we can go to the JCC anytime you want to. Anybody in the Jewish community uh, says it too. It doesn't matter. That is that is my soliloquy. I am five. With and with that, we're gonna start the show in five. Um, before we get into Ross and Lido, you made fun of my khaki pants. Ross, I thought I looked pretty good last night. Lido, I'm sorry, five was making fun of my fucking khaki pants. I thought I looked pretty good. Ross, Lido, what's going on? No much, man. It's all good, man. I, I like to just say for brother fives, uh, we hoop today. And from that video, I would say from seeing him hoop today, he he gets he gets a lot of elevation on his shot. So I could, I could see, I could see why that didn't go according to plans. That shit was all, that shit was all arms. Ross, I mean, you're a shooter, Ross. Go ahead, man. I don't know why you are. T- I don't know why you're taking this personal. This thing is, that's a long. As a Bro. as a guy, as a shooter, that's a long ass shot. Like from from behind that seat is like the equivalent of a probably a half quarter on a normal court. Like I mean. 
and you're yes, behind I'm the seat. T- like I don't know why you're t- you, you're taking. I'm not. You, I'm not. You, you no, let no, Twitter. No, you let Twitter get under your skin. No, it's there. it's like for it's Justin nonsense. in his khaki pants. It's Justin <laughs> in his khaki pants. No. <laughs> It's certain things you don't cross. Like, yo, I get the jokes. I'm not tripping on people I don't know, but I know you. I know <laughs> you can't do better than me. I know you're not better than me, especially based on those khaki hey, look, pants. No. I will say this. I will say that, I'll, and I'll send you the video after, Justin, but like six or seven years ago, my my older brother, Blake, got out for the halftime. So this is when they were doing the little Abita shoot thing. My man knocked them all down. Oh, hell of a sh- hell of a halftime show! I, by the way, and so the I'm, I, shoot. look, that's a great segue. That's a great segue into what I want to talk about because me and Fire were at the game last night, and I and I thought it was probably one of the better atmospheres um, that besides that Lakers game a couple weeks ago uh, was of the, of the entire season. And there was that video right; a lot of people lined up um, for the shirts, and, and a lot of people wanted to get in the game early. And I thought that was awesome. They had a live band out there, and it was really good. Um, and I think Wednesday is going to be awesome uh, as well. And, and Ross, I wanted to talk to you first. We'll pitch a lead on it and then get to five. Um, you know, what do you, you got Spurs, you got Pelicans. You know, the, the Pelicans are one and three in the season against the Spurs. They haven't had their guys, they haven't had their full lineup yet, right? They're going to have BI back, most likely. Uh, they're going to have CJ. They're going to have their full starting five. What do you see as the biggest threat uh, from the Spurs here? Yeah, Matt, uh, well, we, we so we two things really. We've struggled with Dejounte Murray, but at least the last two times we've played him. So, I mean, I, I think we can, you know, you can scheme him a little bit. Last last time we played him, and this is probably more concerning for me, when we played him two weeks ago, right before the Laker game. You know, big, huge game, right? I mean, there was both teams trying to win. I wasn't like a half-assed. Hey, we're you know into the season. Well, that was a the equivalent of a playoff type atmosphere, uh, playoff type game planning. I mean, you, there was no, you know, hold, no holding anything back there. And we got abused down low. I mean, we did. We got out rebounded. We got out worked. More points in the paint. Portal, Pertle, whatever you say his name, killed us. They had another white dude that came out of nowhere that I'm, and look, I, Justin will tell you, y'all watch as much or more NBA than like, damn near everybody that I've ever met. They had a dude that I don't know that came in and killed us in the second half, was getting every offensive rebound. That to me is more concerning because you know both teams are watching that tape. And, you know, I, I, we've got to make a concerted effort to hit the glass tomorrow. We can't get beat up down low again and or on Wednesday. I'm sorry. So I, I think that's going to be really what I'm looking at. I, I think we've got the, the guys to handle the stuff on the perimeter, but we got to really bring it and make sure that we don't lose, you know, easy, you know, lose easy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Lito. So BI missed that last game. What do you, you know, you get Brandon back, you'll have JV, you have CJ. Uh, who's your X factor uh, going into this game here against San Antonio? I think the X factor, in my opinion, it has to be Brandon. Um, but to Ross's point, it kind of is JV too, man. Cause he's, he got to play better defense against, uh, uh, Jakob and um, I can't Collins. even think. Of it. I don't know Collins, Collins. Wasn't it? it was another guy. He he was, was kind of like other white dude. He was yeah. kind of stretch. He was making us yeah. uncomfortable. He could kind of stretch the floor a little. He bit. had like a career day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember his name, but he was busting our ass. I think that he got a. <clears throat> we have to. We got to play hard, man. Like we got to play hard. We got to. We can't leave anything on the floor on Wednesday. Like none of that shit. And and yeah, we got a we got a scheme scheme for uh, Dejounte because I mean obviously he's their best player, right? So I'd rather we make Lonnie Walker beat us or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody else has got to beat us. He cannot keep doing this to us. Yeah, and 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 five. I'm gonna get to you here. Um, you know De- Deontay Murray has hasn't played in a while. Um, you got to think he's gonna be coming back for this for this playing game. Uh, do you, I mean obviously Herb's gonna get him first, right? I, I, like it's hurt the, la- the last game we played him uh, him being the ex I, again I think it's hurt because he had a bad game the last time we played the Spurs like he couldn't make a shot uh, he was off a lot but he still played great defense if we can rebound if we can get out and run but 
rebound first. Like, like we always get, like Jackson is like the key person I'm actually referring to. He likes to leak out way too fast. Like, bro, you, you're seven feet tall. Let him leak out. You can get the, you still can dunk via the trans secondary transition. You still can get those, those dunks in. Yeah. I, I think he has to do a better job of, of being forceful on the, on the boards. And, and I think, I think JB does a really good job. But he can't have a night like he had last night where he has what five fouls in the first half or right. something crazy like that. Like that's that's absurd. Like he's key for us, but we can't lose the 50 50 battle either. Like I think that like like Lito said, if the ball's on the floor, bro, everybody gotta go for it. Not just one person. Brandon gotta be the first one to die. But like if Brandon does that early, it sets a tone for everybody else. Yeah, and I think the guy y'all are talking about is Jock Landell. Is that is that the right? Yes. Is that the Landell? Landell. Jock Landell is the center. Um, that that kind of hurt us there last game. But, you know, Ross, this is – it's an interesting matchup, right? Because you're going against the best coach to ever probably coach the game. Um, a lot of your main guys – not main, but B.I. first real playoff game, right? Uh, Herb Jones, first real playoff game. Trey Murphy, first real playoff game. Jose Alvarado playoff game jackson hayes first real playoff game you're gonna probably want to lean on cj and jv here uh early on as five is saying because look you can't if you get in the hole against the spurs here in a playoff in, in, a, in a do or die game that is not something that is going to go over well here with the pelicans yeah look and I, i'm i understand what you're saying there i'm less concerned about the like the the playoff um jitters and, and all of that stuff just because it's a one game situation right this isn't like hey you're going into a seven game series against the spurs and maybe like even though you're trying not to look ahead to what game two game three might have like part of your mind might still always you know it's probably still like wondering what's this going to be like like this is a once this is you got one shot like there is like there truly is no thursday like you, you have to win um yeah. and so i think that creates a sense of urgency automatically that maybe is different than if you were starting, you know, say a seven game series. And so I, I think, look, and we know the atmosphere is going to be wild. It's going to 830 game. It's, it's it, to me, this is going to be akin to, and I hate to like, I hate to make this comparison just because it, everybody's always like, Oh, it's a saints town, all that shit. But I, I, this to me is going to feel like a, a Thursday night type game for, for the saints or a Sunday night, like where you've got all day, a lot of buildup, there's going to be a lot of shit going on around the arena. We've got our live show, which is going to be crazy. It, so I think, like, you're going to get the best New Orleans has to offer for a basketball environment. Like, we're going to play hard. It just comes down to, like, doing the little things. Because the Spurs are solid, and they played well the last month. Like, it, I mean, this is just the nature of the beast. You, you, so it's a, it's a win and it's a win or go home type situation. So I don't um, – I'm sort of – I think the guys are going to approach it different than they would a seven-game series. Yeah, and five, and then get to Lito here in a second. Five, you know, the the coaching matchup, the X's and O's, you know, what we're really interested in. You got Popovich, you got Willie Green. Um, is that going to play a pretty big role here in this game in a do or die? You know, Pop has been involved in a lot of game sevens. Willie Green, not necessarily too too many game sevens, especially as a head coach. Um, obviously, you got to give advantage to the Spurs there. Hell yeah! I mean, it's this <laughs> guy's first first. I you know, crack at it. You know. Pop has this is like probably Pop probably has more playoff games than two or three or four coaches combined. So it doesn't right. he's gonna have that, but I think it's key for Willie is he has to understand his rotation, which is good because in the playoffs you're supposed to shorten that, right? Yeah. So hopefully he doesn't really have to think about like, oh, how many minutes is this person get versus this person? No, no, no. People playing damn near 40 plus sometimes, and and that's okay because it's only one game. We'll worry about the next game when we get there. But this is just one. You got to – you low-key got to empty the tank. Pause. But you got you to gotta do that. You have to have some kind of notion like there is no tomorrow, so just go with what you have and move forward. Yeah, and Lita, that's a really good point there, Fod, because now let's talk rotations. You know, you're not going to have a 9-10 guy rotation. It's, it's seven or eight. If eight is maybe even stretching it. Right. Who's out? Who who's the odd man out? Because you got to think, right? You got five. You got you, you got your five, and then you got Jose, Najee, Trey, no Billy probably. Um, you know, 
who who are you going with here? <laughs> Devonte is going to play. Too. I'm sorry, Devonte. Fuck. I mean, I've, I forgot. About that. Oh, yeah. that was, that was, hold that up. Was, uh, you know, that was the up. one I had out. That was that was who I had out. I don't necessarily know if he does play. Go ahead, Lito. You, you go, ahead. Who, that go was, ahead. That was that was my eye man out. I'm, I'm not. Listen, I'm sorry. Like I saw people talking about he could use that game yesterday to get his rhythm back. Nah, man, his rhythm is gone. He shot. Like let's let's let let's go let's go with what works. And I just like to say this too earlier, like, you know, Justin, I mean, excuse me, uh, Ross and Five were talking about, you know, Pop is the better coach, et cetera, et cetera. I'm I'm a little nervous that with us being a young team that we're gonna we might initially try to start off the game by doing too much because we've never been in this environment before. So I do think we should lean on CJ and maybe Jonas. You know, it, to start the game, get some easy buckets, and then you know, like get everybody in the rhythm, and then we we everybody else falls in line. Yeah, I I, I agree, and that's a good point because, um, and five want to hear your opinion, then go to Ross here, because Willie's going to have to have a short leash, especially on guys like Jackson Hayes and, and Devontae. Who do you think is going to come off the bench first, Jose or Devonte? Because we all know who's playing better right now. It's Jose Alvarado. Does Willie Green have the balls right now to say, "Hey, I'm going to go with the hot hand here instead of the veteran." We know, we know. But what uh, I'm saying though, what I'm saying though, and this is a tough decision because you got a veteran. I mean, he's not necessarily a, he's a, he's a he's a guy that's been in the league, or an undrafted rookie who's never experienced this. I mean, it's not, it's a very, pretty tough decision. I'll I'll even ask this question: Has Jose, I mean, has Devontae Graham ever played in the playoffs? Last year, I, last year they were okay. playing right. Yeah, last year. I, I but don't I don't know how many. I can, oh, I can look it up. Go ahead. Said, I don't Go care. Ahead, yeah, I, I don't know how many minutes. But, but, but then that's the thing. Like, hell, but he's played in big games. He's had big moments. Like, he's a big shot maker. Like, he's made for these kind of games. I can see Willie playing him. I can see it happening. And I and I get it. Like, Willie's probably one of those people. He's going to live and die with you. And, and he going to – I hope he doesn't regret it. I hope Devontae plays well because he's kind of due for one. He's always had one of those – it's like – they have one really good game and like five average of sub average games. I hope tomorrow is like one of those good games where it's like, well, dang, this is what Devontae Graham can be. I think his problem is more so his mentality. He just he wants to be a volume shooter. I think he should probably get to the rack more. Where their versus yeah. is or the, or the other argument is, Jose doesn't necessarily need the ball to or doesn't need to score to be in, impactful. Um, and I think he'll be re- really really huge in a game like so well on wednesday like so we're, we're fighting demons just like they are so we hope we just hope for the best at this point yeah ross another guy that's not talked about enough is is, is jackson hayes and they've been really good with jackson starting lineup is that another guy that's got to have a short because you know jv bi and cj are getting 40 plus right it's the guys like who's gonna make that like just impactful moment it's gonna be a trey murphy is it gonna be a jackson hayes is it gonna be a Devonte grant you know are you gonna have to have short leashes on these guys such as like you know jackson hayes maybe even her herb you're not gonna have a short. i think even herbs and get 40 plus even if he's not affecting the game all on the offense he's that good defensively it's more about jackson jose Devonte, trey I, you know the way trey's playing right now how do you not give the kid 20 plus minutes to, uh on wednesday yeah, I'm, look, I, I, I caution against that mentality of, uh, like, changing up too much. Kind of what Lito said earlier, it, or five, I'm sorry, is you don't want to come into this game and do a lot of shit different than what you've been doing successfully for the last six, eight weeks, basically since the All-Star break, since BI, and since everybody came back. Like, you've been a good team. I wouldn't, like, I would enter this game with the same mentality that you entered those Laker games with. And that, I mean, in the Clipper game that you lost, but, I mean, You've got to come in with it. Jackson's been playing well. Like, let go with – I mean, if you take – if a guy like that starts off slow and you just pull the plug, like he's done, you've lost him for the game. And it just I, – I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't change up too much about just the way you've handled the first quarter at all, even if you fall behind. Just be, because you've proven now you can come back. You've proven you've got some team chemistry. You've proven that if you're ahead, you know what levers to pull. And if you're behind, you know what levers to pull. If you need a stop. If you need a, an energy play, you like we they've worked some of that out by this point. And so, I, I, you know, I don't expect us to to cut guys out of the rotation. Maybe a Najee doesn't play quite as much um, somebody off the bench like that. But I expect Trey Murphy to come in and get his minutes. Trey Murphy has played well the last few weeks. And the only times he hasn't gotten a lot of minutes is when he's coming in, made either a bonehead error 
or he's come in and just missed his first five or six shots. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, the Clipper game is one where I, I think I can recall he came in and went started like 0 for 4, 0 for 5, and they basically didn't play the rest of the half. But that's because you're not knocking down open shots. Like, I got no use for you at that point. But yeah. I, I, I expect Devontae to play the, the same amount he's been playing. I expect Trey to get his early burn, see if we can continue to stretch the floor out. Um, and, and I expect Jose to, to fill in the gaps there, depending on depending on what you need. So, I, yeah, don't, don't look – I will be very surprised if the rotation, especially in the first half, looks any different than what you've seen the last few weeks. Yeah, and um, Lito gets to you then five. I know five, you got to jump off here soon. But uh, Lito, I thought when Pop went to that 2-3 zone or that little you know yeah. matchup zone there late there in the second half and really didn't adjust to it and the Spurs kind of went on that run, I think that's more beneficial now to the Pelicans. They're going to be like, okay, this is what we have to prepare for. We have to prepare for this. We have to prepare for that. Now, if you see zone, automatically Trey Murphy's in like you, you can't have a JV Jacks lineup right Lito so what I'm trying to I guess the point I'm trying to hammer home is yes we are one in three against the Spurs we haven't really had our full roster yet but you've seen basically the entire Spurs playbook especially defensively and offensively we all we all know who who, who to stop offensively but defensively they kind of showed their hand there uh, a couple weeks ago with that zone uh with that zone matchup there yeah pop <clears throat> Pop Pop showed us he showed us his hand. He 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 kind of showed us what to expect. Not kind of. He showed us what to expect for this game. And I'm I know like Willie being a guy that he is. I know they're reviewing the tape. I know he's like breaking down a film with the rest of the team, showing hey look when this happens we do this. But yeah, to your point, man, you got to get trained there on that. Like that's sh- you got to shoot them out the zone. You, that's the only way they coming out of that. And at that last game, I mean, we had literally nobody. I don't. Brandon didn't play, right? Brandon didn't play. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we literally had nobody to help CJ, like, as far as like a, a you know on the perimeter or like even attacking. We 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 had nothing, and I think going into this game, we have a much better understanding. Like we've we've we can we've digest we took that we took the we took the punch we took it we saw it now it's the rematch and I think as far as like coming back to this game. Yeah, we got every intangible we need. We'll, we'll we'll be somewhat healthy. We'll have all the players together. So I mean, I, I feel good about it. Yeah, and, and five. You know, I want to get your final thought here on on, on Brandon uh, being his first. I count this as a postseason game. Uh, you know, some people are like this is in the playoffs. Like this to me, it's the playoffs. I don't. I, I don't. I don't get that. Like whatever. What are you expecting from Brandon? Are you expecting just him to be Brandon? Or are you expecting him? You know, early on, like you're. I feel like as you said earlier. I feel like you're going to see a different Brandon, right? As as he goes, we go kind of thing. Side note, back to the the, the game before I jump into Brandon Paul's. Yeah. <laughs> Jose had a career high 17 versus mm-hmm. the Spurs. Like he had a huge game. Yep. So I think that even though he's not a great shooter, he he show you he can get into the lane, make plays, yep. dish and score over over bigger people. That could be huge. He actually had 10 rebounds that game. So Wow. But yeah, Brandon Ingram, I think will be this will be the damn. This is really hard. I gotta get my the thesaurus, but he'll have a a huge coming out party. Uh, like he will have a, you know, he will have. It will, it will be one of those things where we're like, wow, this is who, like the Jason Tatum rookie year dunk on LeBron type. Yeah. We, it, I think one of those moments, not just one of those game winners. He's hit. He's hit. Yeah, those are cool, but I think he's gonna have those one of those impactful games where, hey, I'm packing you guys up, pause. Like I'm getting you guys out of here. It's over. It's this is me. Don't even worry. This is my building. Have one of those moments. I think this is this is it for him. Yeah, I I agree. And 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 Ross, I feel like br- this has just been building up for Brandon, right? And like you, there, you have to feel good for him, especially with the bullshit he had to deal with LA, then getting traded by LeBron. Then the bullshit he had to go through the bubble and COVID, and then he had Stan Van Gundy. Like he's finally in a situation where he's thriving. He's finally in a situation where he wants to be here. He's the guy. Even CJ defers to Brandon. Like CJ knows this is Bi's team. Lido and Five been saying it all year. This has been Brandon Ingram, Brandon Ingram's team. And Ross, I feel like Wednesday night he's gonna finally show why he is a franchise player. Yeah, and the the word that we haven't said yet that I think is probably the most relevant is confidence. You saw a different level of confidence and I'm, I'm specifically going to the, the Laker game in LA. That's a different guy. BI wouldn't have had those type of reactions a year ago or two years ago. 
he's a different, more mature, more confident player. And I, I think I, yeah. I, we're all on the same page here. I yeah. think you're going to see that that step. Everybody, we all know he's already taken that step. And right. I think a lot of teams in the league know, but you're going to see it on national TV on Wednesday night. Yeah. But Lito, what's so great now about this situation, right, is – even if B.I. is off, just say he's off. Mm-hmm. You can still lean on that fucking guy named C.J. McCollum and Jonas Valanciunas. And if I'm Brandon, right, I am I know I'm jacked up. I'm excited. If I know I don't have my, my stuff going on, I know that, well, shit, you know what? I can get C.J. involved. Or I, can get, I can get Jonas involved. Um, that's got to be that, – that, that's a nice, you know, safety net to have. It lets that, – that lets Brandon just go out and play free. Brandon exactly. doesn't have to put too much on his shoulders. He has the New Orleans dance instructor in CJ McCollum asking you to have this dance, taking you through the lane, getting his midi off, however he gets it off. Then, you know, like I, I got that. I got a safety valve in a guy who can get a bucket any kind of way. Mm-hmm. I don't have to press too much. Brandon is going – Brandon shoots over uh, – anybody guarding him on that team other than DeJounte is literally like shooting over a fucking chair. He – no, nobody's going to bother his shot, Right. As long as he's healthy enough to go, which, I mean, he's going to go. I, I have no doubt about it in my mind. But I think Brandon is going to surprise a lot of people, man. I think it's going to be his coming out party. And, I, and, I, and I'm and i really happy that he gets – this is a playoff game to me. It's a playoff game. It's the only way I can look that, at it. You know, I, I got to address that. Like, is everybody else playing? Is that, everybody in the league playing? That's, that's what I'm playing. saying. Or if, you're, if your team isn't playing, yeah. that's how you know it's the playoffs. So, like, you know I mean? Look, we don't make the we didn't make the damn rules. The, the league made the rules. It's it's a playoff game. That shit drives me nuts. If your team ain't playing, that it's yeah. a playoff game because you're mad about it. So shut up. That's <laughs> it's some Lakers, it's some Lakers rhetoric, Ross. That's that's what it is. I know people are just so dumb. <laughs> I love this show, man. Uh, five more minutes to wrap up, so uh, they got spaces going on tonight, which I'm excited about. But let's talk about the um, let's talk about the you know, we talk about the Spurs Pelicans. We know what we got to do, right? Well, I feel like I feel pretty confident. You know, I don't want to look into Minnesota or LA because I'm focused on San Antonio. I'm not focused on LA or Minnesota. We'll we'll get there. We'll do a podcast on them when we win. Um, but we have an awesome live show uh, coming this Wednesday night, man. I'm so excited. Uh, we finally, finally get to do a live show at the Rusty Nail in front of all of our fans, in front of the twelve, in front of you know we're at special guests. Um, Ross, kind of, kind of, kind of give the fans a little, a little taste of what what's going to happen on Wednesday. Yeah, it's going to be a hell of a time. Look, we've we've been building up for this for really two years now, and uh, I've had a couple things planned, and they've gotten you know hadn't worked out one way or the other. COVID, hurricanes, all this stuff. Um, we're going to throw it down. On Wednesday before that game. We've got some huge guests coming on. We're going to be live. We've got Maker's Mark sponsoring the whole thing. We're going to have food. We're going to have drinks. We are going to have Pelicans, uh, the biggest Pelicans people coming on. We've got some staffers coming on. Um, it's going to be sick. I mean, it, it's, look, and we're at a great spot. Rusty Nail Sidecar, you're right there in the warehouse district. We're going to party it up for two hours and then we're walking to the game and, and, then, and then it's on <laughs> and then it's all, Lito there's a tweet today that said um, he tweeted at us and said uh, if they lose the Spurs the season's a failure I saw that how is I'm not trying to bash you I mean I don't really necessarily no, let's care bash him. Let's bash him. No, let's bash him. go ahead go why why would you why would someone say that how 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 would it be a failure? We were we were we were one in thirteen or whatever the hell we were. I don't even like the I don't even like to look back at that. Whatever we were, we were one in twelve and three and sixteen. But go ahead, three and sixteen. All right, we're in a play. We're in the playoffs, <laughs> right? We're in the playoffs. From where we started to where we are now, how could you deem that season a failure? You got you got <clears throat> you got guys. You look at Jose Alvarado. He got a deal. You know what I'm saying? He got he got a not a two way deal. He has a he has an actual guaranteed contract. You got Trey Murphy leading. I think rookies in three point percentage. Yep, yep. Right. You finally figured out how to use Jackson or how to unlock Jackson. Yep. Herb is a diamond in the rough that like you just unearth. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Brandon has and listen, I gotta address this too because people gave me shit for saying Brandon was the most improved on my on my. Uh, <laughs> 
Yo, listen, let me address this. I understand everybody saying Jackson, and I'm not trying to diss Jackson, but you can't. If we look, I'm specifically speaking from the game. I'm looking at the game. Jackson has not improved more than Brandon. Brandon improved again. He took a leap defensively. He took a leap as a leader. He took a leap as a playmaker. You know what I'm saying? He was the, he was the fucking guy. He's the MVP of the team. So that that's how I'm looking at that. But anyways, th that, what I just said, you, you found that this season. So, nah, man, this season has been nothing but a success. Willie's going to grow as a coach. He's done a hell of a job so far. Like, nah, man, we got to stop thinking like that. Like that, no, shit is not. Yeah, and, and that stuff's toxic. And one thing you even say, Lito, is, is CJ McCollum. Like, you have CJ now for like, at least two more years, and you already probably know he's going to get an extension. Like, that's a win in itself, and now you're playing fucking postseason basketball? Like, how can you be upset? Like, listen, Ross, we started this podcast two, two and a half years ago because we were sick and tired of the way the team was covered, and – uh, we, we, we wanted to get like kind of a winner and things like that. And like, I feel like finally we're starting to get that right. Am I satisfied if we lose, if we lose Wednesday, I'll be upset, but yeah. looking back on it, you still got a top 10 pick. You nailed the fucking draft. You nailed the head coach. You got BI at 24. You got CJ McCollum who's only 30. You, you know, you, you got guys now finally that we have a foundation. You have a, a vision and to think that, you know, if we're going to lose against the Spurs, it's a failure. Like. No way. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that, that's total nonsense. You you, you can't look you, you can't look at a, an eighty two game five month season where so much has changed and and put it on one game. I mean, because if you it, like, just look at the. I mean, in the last month, in games that Bi and CJ have played, we're like seven and two. Okay, <laughs> that's without Zion Williamson. By the way, let's let's just make that real clear. So. You improve the roster unquestionably. You improve the roster to start the season by making some of the moves we made. You improve the roster again with quality draft picks that have now proven themselves at the NBA level. This isn't summer league. This is not uh, G League shit. These are now rookies that have proven themselves to be quality players at the NBA level. Oh, and you went and got CJ McCollum. And since he's been here, you've been a very good team. So evaluating a whole season when so much has changed just by saying if you lose this one it's just idiotic to me um and, and it just lacks a, a sort of a a big picture view of of how much the team the franchise have grown and how many little yeah. things have gone right throughout the season to to sort of get you where you are right now it's it, like yeah it's just a, it kind of pisses me off a little bit to sit here and talk about it because Everyone knows that we're going to start if, if this team is healthy starting, even if we lose by 20 to the Spurs on Wednesday, which we're not. But even if we did and we bring back this roster plus a top 10 pick plus an absolute animal of a human being, Zion Williamson, healthy next year, like who nobody who we're not going to be having this conversation because we're going to be rolling into that bitch is like a four seed. So. Yeah. No, yeah, it, this is not a failure if we lose this game. No. And, and so I I'm glad we're just ending on that. I mean, because. Wednesday night's going to be probably one of the best nights in this franchise since David Griffin, Zion Williamson been here and Brandon Ingram, you know, and, and it's finally, you know, no COVID anymore. It's going to be packed. It's going to be a new Orleans. It's going to be fucking new Orleans. That's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Literally. It's going to be new Orleans. It's going to be a drink fest. It's going to be everybody getting together, being happy, no matter what they're going to be, you know, everyone's just going to be hugging and dapping each other off. And you know, the game's going to be electric. Like I'm so excited because Lita, we were talking about it like, I was like, man, I hope it's not a six o'clock tip off. Like that wouldn't, because you're rushing from work and stuff. Like now you give us an eight thirty game. Right? It, I feel like I'm a Saints fan right now because, like, you knew right during that Drew Brees era, you were like, ain't Steelers coming in town on Halloween yeah. night? Like, you ain't fucking yeah, winning. Are you, yeah. like, you serious? Like the Rams had to win because they paid the refs off. Like th those are those are the <laughs> things that like, like New Orleans takes this shit seriously. And to say it's not a basketball city, it's a fucking basketball city. I don't care what you say. People are gonna yeah. show out. People like this team. Lito, close us out. Man, like I told Scott Kushner, I tweeted at Scott the other day. He was saying it was it was too late. Like, listen, I I sleep. I was willing to sleep in the fucking uh in a in a in the in the store like in front of the arena like fuck that like we we have a playoff game like we dude you tweeted the other day the line was down the down the block to get into the arena an hour before the game we're a basketball city man like you have to give things time to mature coming to maturation like and 
now you're seeing it. Like we're seeing the fruits of our labor and like not only the team, the, the, the city, the, the Pels 12, <clears throat> it's just like everything is coming together. And, you know, like the fans have been here, but we just have bad, we've, the narrative is always the people, the national media is always shitting on us. So we didn't get a chance to like actually tell our side, but now it's like, we, we we have it and there's no fun that the rabbit got the gun like everybody's about to be pissed off because i'm talking so much shit like i said the other day if you think i'm gonna be humble about this because we're gonna be the spurs <laughs> like we're gonna speed the spurs and then you know what i'm saying hopefully we get the the t wolves not looking past the spurs but hopefully we get the t wolves and you know yeah and go from there you know uh wow it's been a fun run man it's it's been a crazy you know we're, we're obviously gonna do a podcast after this but it's been a roller coaster year i mean you want to talk about change ross we, we've changed this podcast we've added great additions we've added cj mccullough we've added you know i, I guess who would you call five i guess cj I and mean, then lito's my leader i don't know i, I don't well, Lito's like that bit like larry nance i guess you know, big bruiser kind of guy he's always happy so um now, once again, this is presented to you by Company Burger, located at 4600 for Red Street. Make sure to go check them out. Wednesday night, tip off 830. Pre-game live show starts at 5. We're going to come on at 545. We have an awesome list of guests. We're going to bring on the crew of Propel's Talk. Leo's going to come on. Ross, 5. Stephen Offer's going to be here. It's going to be a blast, man. I'm so excited we're finally going to get to do this at the Rusty Nail. Um which is also sidecar as well. There's going to be food. There's going to be drinks. There's going to be shot girls. There's going to be fucking everything. So there's going to be, there's going to be everything. Make sure you show out. If you have any questions, hit us up once again, yeah. follow us. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like, and subscribe. It helps the channel out. You can follow us on pro Pelstock on Instagram or Twitter. And that's it guys. DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use download the code boot bet $5. You win money. <laughs> Who doesn't like free money? All right. <laughs> Eating the W, right? All right, guys. We're out of here. Y'all take care. Yeah.